come out on this beautiful morning. We were ready to start celebrating, uh, we should have already started celebrating our Martin Luther King weekend and uh, get you to be our uh, day for volunteers throughout the community. There's always something we can do to help the community and that's what Martin Luther King expressed. But a day of being able to give up your service to be able to improve your community no matter where you're at. We're here this morning now uh, with uh, Professor Kalama and uh, uh, Professor White. And she's here somewhere. And we're talking about the UCTB uh, Community Benefit Fund for Champaign Urbana and its implications and uh, how we are able to use that to benefit ourselves and to help break or bridge the digital divide. I appreciate the, uh, the attempt to recruit me and look for a I'll try. <laughs> but I'm a classroom person, and, uh, but I uh, uh, it's certainly a pleasure to be here at, uh, at Salem. First of all, before we get started, uh, I'd like to, uh, everyone who has not gotten this material, uh, has anyone not gotten this material? That's in the front. I think maybe uh, yeah. you have the material. Why don't you put it Let's pick up one of everything that we want. Okay. Uh, my name is Abdul Al Kalama, and uh, I am, uh, among other things, on the faculty of the University of Illinois, but uh, for this meeting, I am on the policy committee of the UC2B uh, organization and uh, want to uh, welcome everyone. And uh, I think it's appropriate for us to introduce ourselves. I've introduced myself to you. Perhaps we should introduce each other. Uh, and let's start with uh, Sister Carol. Oh. <laughs> I'm Carol Lewis. I'm from Salem Baptist Church. I'm the cyber committee here. <coughs> and I'm Joe Lewis. Same thing. <laughs> I'm Kay Williams. I'm on the faculty of the University of Illinois, and I send students every fall into the uh, community to do field work, serve the community as they learn. I'm Janelle. Uh, I'm a reporter for the Daily Atlantic, so I'm here to cover what you guys come up with today. I'm Sammy Blindham. I'm a resident of the area and also a graduate student at the University of Illinois. I'm John Kellen, I'm a Dale and Architect. And he's got the biggest lens in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Marvin Bogan, I'm the director of the uh, Cyber Lab here at Salem Baptist Church and also a uh, policy board member. My name is Brian Zellup and I'm a graduate student at the University of Illinois. His brother right here. Oh, uh, Artis James with the National Council of African American Men. Okay. And you'll speak for three or? Sure, yeah. Uh, with your boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, this is Julian and Lucy. These guys go to Stratton Elementary, and I'm a dad at Stratton Elementary. Hi, I'm Chris Tharma. I'm also on the Salem Cyber Committee, and I'm a member of the UCB Outreach Team. And then, um, Reverend Melinda Carr, I'm uh, the president of the Minnesota Alliance. I'm Reverend Charles Nash. I'm the pastor of New Hope Church in Champaign, uh, founder and president of New Hope Academy, and a member of the Minister of Office. Okay. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, various documents that we have uh, made available, and I kind of want to walk through a couple of them to give background. I think, as everyone knows, uh, UCDB is a federally uh, initiated uh, but multi-source program in the sense that uh, UCDB has funding from the federal government, it has funding from the state of Illinois, it has funding from various institutions, particularly <coughs> large institutions like the two cities, the university, and uh, other agencies like hospital and so on had contributed resources. So the full package uh, is uh, of multiple organizations and it amounts to about $30 million. 
we've all introduced ourselves, and I just want to give Reverend Barnes an opportunity to introduce himself. Good morning, Reverend Barnes, uh, better known as Sanders, the Latin Church of Faith. Okay. So with this money, the project was to build a set of seven rings, fiber optic rings, that cover the entire area. But more than that, uh, we got uh, additional funds to build uh, fiber to the home or fiber to the premise in uh, this area here in North Champaign. The criteria being 40% uh, or below of connectivity. And we did research and we identified this community, but there are several others that aren't contiguous with this particular area uh, that are also. And those of you who uh, would like to look at the specifics, there is a website for UC2B. That's U, the letter U, C, and then the number 2, and then B. We play with that a little bit because in the one hand, it, is, it stands for uh, Urbana-Champaign Big Broadband. In other words, two Bs, Big Broadband. But we also, at least I think of it as a philosophical statement. You see to be. In other words, you have to be in the world. And uh, that, of course, is what, uh, what we're doing is we're giving people the opportunity to perceive reality in real time for the entire globe. I think this is something we should all think about. This is the first moment in human history where our species that is homo sapiens sapiens with our various languages can communicate with each other all over the globe in real time. Now I grew up and I see some other gray hairs in here but we went to the movies to see newsreels about what was happening in different parts of the world. That's as close as you got and that was really exciting and now we're sitting with devices and so forth talking to people on the ground in some city and some other continent and some other place. So this is creating a new challenge for humanity, right? Because we're really a kind of an awful lot often, you know, but I mean, you put them all in the same room, which is what the globe is now becoming because of this technology, and suddenly now we're challenged to be human beings in a way that we have never been. So it's a really interesting moment, and I think that it's only when we fully understand that this is a new moment in human history do we understand the challenge that faces us, even here on the ground in our little postage stamp called champagne Urbana? So if we don't see the big picture, right? You know, you know the phrase. Think global, act local. Well, we really can do it now. So, and I'm not talking just about this exact moment, I'm talking about when automatic machine facilitated translation of languages is going to be instantaneous and therefore the language problems are going to be overcome. Now we're, well first of all everybody here remembers when the uh, optical scanning in the grocery store was kind of poor when it first happened and people would ah, and they'd get mad and they'd have to punch in the information but now you go in any which way and it works. <coughs> Well, today, Google translation is not that great. But tomorrow, it's going to be excellent, and we're going to be on the telephone talking to somebody. You speak in English, they will hear it in French. They will speak in French, and you will hear it in English. In other words, we're entering into a period of history that we've never experienced before. Now, if we can only grasp that, then suddenly, the challenge that we face today, right, is not just the challenge of the next step we're making, it's a really a new world we're entering. And so, I'm, I'm starting this way to get everybody into thinking, well, we, again, a phrase we know, thinking out of the box. If there was ever a moment to think out of the box, it's not. Okay. Uh, Maybe that's why he voted to call me a reverend. I speak with uh, passion and belief about what we're talking about. This sister here needs a seat. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, everybody's been introducing themselves. Uh, two sisters just walked in. What? Imani Gazelle. Aisha Marsh. Okay. Uh, uh, Chris, could you help pass this out to these sisters who just came in? Make sure you get a bishop and I one too, please, sir. Okay. Oh, wait, there, wait a minute now. There are two other people just came in. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Brother, brother Ham. And for those of you who haven't, we're going to send the sign up sheet around and yeah. sign up. I'm going to try to find it. Here Okay. The first document I'd like you to turn to is this one-page document called A Resolution. This is the resolution as passed by the uh, policy committee of UCDB. And I'd like to just walk us through it because this is the framework that we're operating in. Uh, be it resolved by the UCB Policy Board as follows. One, the Policy Board hereby establishes a goal to achieve digital equality for all people in the UCB service area and adopts the following objectives to achieve the goal. Now, the point I want to make here is that the UCB service area uh, is, we have to think of it as the entire uh, land mass covered by the seven rings. So we're talking about all of Champaign, all of Urbana, and Savoy. The policy two, the policy board will <coughs> issue an annual public report on the digital divide in UC to be service area, the area of the seven rings including all of Urbana, Champaign, and Savoy. Three, the policy board will convene an annual meeting of anchor social institutions to discuss the above report and set general goals for overcoming the digital divide. This meeting will be open to the public and scheduled as a regular meeting of all UCDB committees. The policy board sets a goal to allocate 5% of its annual revenue and no less than 2% to a community benefit fund as a line item in the budget. Money from this fund will be dedicated to overcoming the digital divide according to the general goals as above and the process as below. I think we have more people coming in. It would be useful if people sort of moved in a way that we could uh, accommodate. Yeah. Okay, can you get there? the operational phase of uc to the policy board will appoint an advisory committee for digital, digital equality to help it achieve the goals as above. The policy board will appoint two advisory committee co-chairs and at least seven committee members, including at least one member of the policy committee. All other committee roles will be de decided upon by the advisory committee. A majority of the advisory committee members will be chosen from the anchor institutions which serve the underserved population of UC to be service area. The policy board states its desires and intention that the members of the advisory committee represents the diversity of residents in the UC to be service area. The advisory committee for digital equality will propose a plan, including competitive grant award awards from the Community Benefit Fund to non-governmental agencies to implement the general goals as above. If there is no available money in any given year, no grants will be made. The advisory committee will forward to the policy board its recommendations for spending the Community Benefit Fund, and the policy board will make the final decisions. Okay, that is the resolution that uh, we passed and is operative. Of course, 
of course, we know that uh, it is already operational. And we do not have a community benefit fund committee. So this is a form of catch up. Uh, and uh, those of you who have been following this, uh, this has been a very interesting and in many respects trying, in many respects innovative uh, activity. Uh, and that's true all across the country. So we are really talking about the kind of innovation that is actually disruptive because it's new and we've got to change and it changes things. And uh, again, that's what I was talking about in terms of imagining the future. Uh, again, I just want to mention, those of you with a little gray hair, everybody here remembers Flash Gordon. <laughs> Or you remember, uh, what's that guy, that kind of comic cop that used to talk to his shoe? It's Tracy. Yeah, that guy. Uh, it's Tracy. Yeah, well, guess what's going on right now? People are talking to their watches. People are talking to things that look like a pack of cigarettes. Sometimes people are walking down the street talking and you don't see any device. They're just talking. And they might be talking to somebody in a different continent. So we are really living in a strange way uh, in relationship to the imaginative science fiction of yesterday. I mean, here we are right in it. So again, to begin this conversation, what we have to do is get out of the box. Think in new ways. Otherwise, we're looking at a computer and we think it's a very interesting typewriter. If any of you remember when we first thought that's what it was. Okay. Now I want you to turn to uh, the next what do you mean? Uh, Excuse me. Uh, yes. When do we get to talk? You can talk right now if you want okay. to. Okay. So uh, when you say innovative, what it, uh, what do you mean? The technology part of it, or the fact that you're going to have an advisory board or a benefit sponsor? I'm talking about all of it. Okay. UC to be okay. is a new venture. Okay. And therefore, for example, um, Steve Carter who is the outgoing city manager of Champaign, uh, said that the level of cooperation between the university and the two cities has operated at a level that he hasn't seen in his almost 30 years of working in this town. That's an innovation. A cooperative relationship to create something new that involves everybody. Now, there may be others, but clearly, the entire country is going through this, what does it mean to have this level of connectivity? And the reason that the, uh, the, the federal funds were issued is because the United States is so woefully behind other countries. Uh, and you know what they say, you know, uh, it shows up when they grow up. And so later on, the uh, falling behind is going to have a tremendous impact on everybody. And so this is not an option. This is a necessity. And when it comes to our community, and when I say our, in this particular instance, I'm talking about the African American community, where we have the fighters at home, you can't get a job application at McDonald's unless you go online. And so we're not talking about an option here. We're talking about slavery is over and we're trying to learn how to read. Now we're talking the industrial situation is over, and that's what the educational system was set up to do, is prepare people to go to work in a factory. They could take somebody speaking German. In fact, in fact, in this country, they had elementary schools in German to facilitate that. Uh, they won't have a school in Spanish, but they'll have, they had those schools. And the elementary schools prepared people for this industrial system, which led to the United States' role in the world. Now that's over. Now our public schools are being replaced by privatized education, and everybody stuck in the public schools is not being educated. The reality of what we face is very serious, and I'm trying to get everybody on the serious side, so when we talk about what we're going to do, it's in relationship to an image, and the image you ought to have is the emergency room. Okay, I know this is Saturday morning, but you know, hey, that's what the agenda is. Uh, yes. Um, was there any uh, debate around the question of who would be served geographically, who would be served by the benefit funds? Because 
you, you may just need to remind me or catch me up on something. Cause, and I see here the, the seven rings, you know, that sounds like Lord of the Rings to me. When there's <laughs> nine rings or something, whatever. But if you could remind those of us who maybe forgot what the seven rings concept is, yep. and then um, there are particular census tracts, right, that had to do with who gets fiber to the home, and that's more on this side of town. So I'm asking if there was some kind of debate about who's included in that kind of thing. Yeah. The federal legislation established the criteria, so there's no debate. The criteria for the federal money is that we had to find census block areas, and that's a category of the government which has so many blocks is an area, so it's specific areas. And this town, as in every area, every town, is divided into specific blocks. And therefore, what we did, and we had a very short time to do this, but we got a bunch of volunteers together, and we went out and we surveyed the community asking people, do you have connectivity? And so wherever we found blocks that were below the 40%, we identified them. And we went everywhere we could. Um, and we were surprised. For example, uh, there are areas where there are multiple dwelling units that uh, house university students. They're all connected. And so places where those buildings were, those census blocks didn't qualify because people were connected. Um, not all of the areas are contiguous to North Champaign. There are two or three other areas that we were able to find. But it was really, we had like three weeks to identify. And so it's really crazy. We got a lot of volunteers and so on. Um, we wanted to think about the future, and therefore the rings cover our entire community. In other words, we've got technology underground that will serve us for the next 20 or 30 years, at least. So that's, that's on the one hand. But I want to tell everybody that when we put our proposals in, we put two proposals in. Well, there were three, really, but there were two categories. One category is underground. We got that money, but we also wanted above ground money for community technology centers, for health, for education, and so forth. We did not get that money, and partly it was because you know it could only give so many grants, and it was hard for one town to get more than one grant. Anyway, uh, that ain't stopped nothing because we still went on. We have several nationally significant things happening here. First. Uh, we are the only place that got this to the premise hookup money. But secondly, we're the only place in the country that decided on a community benefit fund. So that what we're doing is we're facilitating, now this is a very important point here. Many people might think of this as a, as a gift or as, as welfare or something. We think of the Community Benefit Fund as an investment. Why? Well, think of it this way. If you had a fax machine, you first went in the community with a fax machine. Now, in the old economy, everybody would want it, and you know that would have high value. But the reality is, if you were the only one with a fax machine, you couldn't fax nobody. So the value of the fax machine is proportionate to how many other people have fax machines. That's the same thing with connectivity. If you got a, a, a smartphone and none of your friends do, you can't text anybody you want to text. So it's a function of how many other people have it. So when we talk about a community benefit fund, we're talking about expanding the value of everybody's connectivity because then everybody's connected. Take a public school, for instance. Half the kids in class have connectivity, half the kids don't. What's a teacher going to do in terms of homework? What's a teacher going to do in terms of assignments? So we've got a situation here where the value of this technology is the extent to which we can get everybody connected. But it really goes beyond that. Because, you know, some people have a telephone, don't answer it. Some people get a text message and then next week they say, well, that's what that was. So we've got work to do. And uh, that's really what we're talking about in terms of 
the Community Benefit Fund. We do have our own generated money. Nobody else in the country did that. Everybody else in the country is still walking around begging on public some money. We got the money because we imposed on ourselves the ability to invest in our own community. And so that's what we're here to talk about. Okay, now let's go to uh, this, uh, that's dated 9-6, this next page. And I'm sorry those of you who have come in, um, it's a wonderful turnout. We simply did not uh, copy enough. I don't know if there's a church uh, copy machine that could uh, facilitate this. Can I just put this, I don't know if this is the right time that to have this question asked uh, and answered or whether you can, this you know, add it to your agenda for later. But when it talks about uh, issuing an annual yes. public report yes. uh, on the digital divide and yes. the goal of achieving digital quality, okay. What I want to know is, is there a, what's the... Baseline. Is there is there some established baseline understanding of this is where we are right now, and we're trying to get here, and here's the benchmarks to get us there. So the report is based on that. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, this document here, everyone should get because the um, the cover story has this picture here of this report. It's a two volume report. Now what we did is, the way this whole thing is organized is around uh, individual households in the target area. But there's also a concept that the legislation set forward called anchor social institution. Now this is again something new that we did here, very unique in the entire United States. Every other community identified the schools, the hospital, the police, the junior college, that was it. We took the legislation literally because it focused on the vulnerable communities. So we included every church that we could find, uh, every homeless shelter, every women's shelter, uh, the social service agencies, in other words, if you can think of the society being stratified, right? There was a line under which people weren't connecting people. And so we decided to go connect everybody. And so again, that's new, but that's a challenge. You know, it's just like the urban league. When people migrated from the rural south to the urban north, you're talking about people who started out going to the bathroom in an outhouse. And two days later, they were going to the bathroom inside with a private toilet. Well, I don't know how many people know anything about an outhouse, but you could drop anything in that hole. But when you go into a bathroom in a house, you can't drop everything in that hole. You have to learn. And so, you know, this is a real situation here. And there were racists in Detroit, for instance, that wanted to prove that black people couldn't live anywhere, went and got some people out of contented shotgun houses brought them to Detroit, didn't tell them anything, and put them in a suburban house, you know, blah, 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 and you know, they tore it up. As if that was making a point about black people as opposed to a point about people living in a rural agricultural area, which would have been anybody. So we got a situation here. Why did I tell you that story? <laughs> and my brother, you know, gets to go in and, you know, okay, everybody. You know. Is, there, is there a floor under which, is there a minimum under which Thank you. we're trying to connect? That's right. Yeah. That's right. I need help, you know. Okay, uh, so this is, these reports are online. And the URL is in this document. Who these copies? You got it? Yeah. The resolution. Yes. And so when Imani asked, do we have baseline data on so that we can look at our progress? That's what this is about. This is describing in exact detail. This I expect to get this back, but I, I want to well this passage you can take a look. Because every church or community agency, and I mean I'm talking about we took pictures of the actual computers. Now, you know, when you think about 10, 20, 30 years from now, this is going to look ancient. 
but we do have, we have the information. That's the point. Okay. Now, on this next document, there are questions that I think are important for us to think about. It says, uh, it's to the U.S., uh, to the UCDB Policy Committee. And it's to get us thinking about what we're going to do with this uh, new opportunity. First point, who is our target? The vast numbers who have yet to go online or people who are in need of help to stay online. We have to think about the diversity and what our first steps are and so forth. And uh, second, are we going to begin with a community-wide program or by making grants to a small number of community groups based on a competitive process? Again, very important point. Three, at the level of physical access to the internet, How are we going to help people? Community help desk, home visits to low-income seniors and the disabled, free classes or just-in-time help, recycling machines, a general service program to keep machines and software functioning, etc. Four, at the level of online resources, are we going to host web pages or build a digital commons to be shared by the community? For instance, a local wiki. And how can we guarantee sustainability? This means the percent of revenue, but also good oversight. What kind of committee do we need to build? How and when? So these were five questions that we started asking uh, in September. And there's been some discussion. Uh, we all know that, uh, who are close to UCB, know that it hasn't been a straight line. And there's been some bumps in the road, but we've been making progress. And so now we're in a position of really starting to have deep community discussions about what we're going to do with the Community Benefit uh, Fund. But more importantly than that, it's what are we going to do to help create uh, Champaign-Urbana as a smart informational city? That's the real question. And then the Community Benefit Fund is used to help us do that. So the question is not, how are we going to distribute money? The question is, how are we going to transform our community? And then we use the money to do that. But in any case, I think it's really important at the beginning of this process, we're going to have many meetings. This is just the first one, is to really take seriously what uh, uh, Reverend Underwood said, which is earlier, before everybody, everyone got here, she said, when are we going to talk? And so now's the time to talk. Uh, I think it's important for everybody uh, to have an initial say so we can begin to see what the agenda of our next meeting should be, uh, who are additional people we should make efforts to get to the meeting so we have every uh, important uh, person who's in, in, in the discussion in the community to be here, so to share this discussion. So the floor is open. Yes, Reverend. Yes. Yeah, um Who would this we for an example? Um, uh, we were left out of this book, like our church is an anchor church. Now, uh, maybe we were last in something that we didn't do, you know, and and as far as we were left out, uh, we meaning our church was left out of uh, these nonprofits who got the grants. Now maybe there was a process that we maybe we were last in that we didn't get into the competitiveness. Uh, we weren't competitive enough, or we didn't know how to put in an application for it. Um, you know, I don't know how, how, just like I didn't know about this meeting, uh, and we generally have been at all the meetings. Um, someone told me it was, uh, we didn't get an email. So uh, um, I, I found out through the Ministry of Alliance, uh, so, I mean, it's something maybe we're not doing, you know, to find out, you know, about the meetings. You know, the e-black, I thought I was on the e-black list, but, you know, I didn't find out about this meeting. 
you know, only do the minister alive, maybe, you know, so. Well, uh, I thought our church, you know, should have gotten something. I, uh, first of all, we uh, yeah, certainly yeah, made yeah, efforts yeah. to get everybody. Eat Black See You did send out information to everybody about this meeting. But when you say everybody, you know, our church is an anchor institution. What I'm saying uh, is that I can detail for you what we did to get the word out. And you don't have meeting. to do it now, but I just want I to put that out there. I don't know why your church didn't, minutes. didn't uh, why you didn't get that information. But on this money, this 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 sheet here, which I didn't uh, mention, which I should mention, this is a an announcement from the city of Champaign. The city of Champaign uh, was able to get a grant, uh, and I think it was twenty thousand dollars, or it was some amount of money like that. And they decided to set up a grant process to facilitate. Uh, there were many different uh, attempts to inform the community. And uh, as you can see, these churches filled out applications I'm glad to, see to the city, and they got the funds. This is not UC to be, though, right? No, this is the city of Champaign. I see. OK, and this is not the benefit fund. No. OK. It's actually money from Comcast. Money from Comcast. Oh, OK. And so we don't have Comcast, so we couldn't have. No, no. It's the money from Comcast went to the city of Champaign. <coughs> the city of Champaign made it available to any agency who in the town who would apply to get up to $3,000. That's how it went down. Okay. And there, Will Kyles is here. Peter Falk is here from the Telecommunications Commission. And these are the people who are uh, close to this process and can give you the detailed information. I got this news release yesterday. And so I wanted to make it available to everybody so that you could see, you know, uh, what the motion is in the, in the community. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, this benefit fund uh, yeah. might be kind of a little bit behind, but. Um, can this fund be used to train uh, some of the, uh, let's say, young men in the black community to install the fiber optic cable to the home, or is that under something else? We can propose anything we think that will contribute to overcoming the digital divide. The one policy focus of the Community Benefit Fund is to uh, help uh, lower or to uh, eliminate the digital divide in our community. And so training of varying kinds is all appropriate under that general mission. So it's really up to us to develop a plan that will then go to the policy committee uh, for approval. So that's what this meeting is about, to try to figure out what is it that we can conceive of that would make the biggest impact on the community. You know, it's sort of like when somebody goes into the emergency room. Their nose is running, they, they just stubbed their toe, they got all kinds of things wrong with them, but what they do with the emergency room is they try to figure out what's the most important thing. You're not going to die from runny nose, right? But if you're bleeding out of your neck, you might die. So they don't deal with the runny nose. They go straight to the neck. What we got to figure out is let's put the runny noses aside and let's try to figure out what is it that our community really needs to make a step forward. Because this is a rare opportunity for us to be sitting here with the freedom to think about what we want to do in our community as opposed to think in terms of the boxes that are created when they have specifications for a particular grant, where you really have to apply for the money in the way they want you to use it. We have to figure out what we want to do. Then we can take that and negotiate it, you know, whatever we have to do to, to, to get them to give us the money. Follow-up question on this. Uh, is there any one out there like Comcast or someone right now training people uh, to install these fiber optic to the home or in, to the home or in, inside the home? No, not that I know of, but what we do have in this town, okay, I give you we do have in this town is Parkland. And Parkland has a Department of Computer Science, 
and they're the ones who are training people closest to uh, the permanent residents in our community. U of I has a very powerful computer science department. But they are training people who then leave here and go throughout the globe. So we have access to, to training, but we don't have a special training set up for the particularity of this project. But there's people who want to speak to that, Peter and then Brendan Bowden. Sure. Um, so one part of, part of my involvement in this process is I own a company that does work of this type. Um, and I work with another local company, Southern Bell. Um, you may know Henry Bell. And we, over the course of this project, we train, I think, 25 people to do this kind of work. Um, the immediate work in Champaign is kind of tailing off. So we're not training new people right now. Um, but we have, over the last year, been discussing establishing a program for this kind of stuff at Parkland. One of the problems with it is that there is no widely established curriculum that you can go to Parkland and, and take now that teaches you the kinds of things you actually need for this. Uh, Comcast has its own training program. AT&T has its own training program. Uh, that there are the electrical unions that have some training in related areas, but they're all electrical. Um, th there's a telecommunications union, but it's the one that at and and Comcast are part of, so they have their own in-house training for that. So we, I, if you're interested in that area, um, I'd be happy to make sure to include you when, when I talk with Parkland about this stuff and we We've sort of laid out a roadmap for how to establish a training program for this kind of thing. It's just a matter of having the having the energy to, to get it in place and having the jobs that you know nobody wants to train people for jobs that don't exist. Um, and right now, those jobs are are coming to an end in this community. Oh, no, no. Okay, okay, so, Reverend Bogus. Uh, what Peter's saying is it's very relevant. And, I, and I, I would ask that we also look at the dynamic of what is going on when it comes to what you're asking because you're talking about job development. UC2D at its onset was actually formatted to develop jobs in the community as an economic uh, stance, not just to put in high speed fiber optic, but also to enhance the community. Well, now that we're in the operational stage of UC2D, we're looking at now is UC to be going to be operated uh, on its own, or is it going to be a, uh, operated by a third party? If that third party comes in, then that third party would have the say of who is actually going to be doing the work. So it's going to really be up to them to have what persons come in to get training done for their particular business, as it is with Volo or with uh, the other units that are working for UC to be. Still, that does not mean that we are all going to have the opportunity through the benefit fund to help establish a training class for that through the core units that we have within our community. So it's really going to be up to us in the way we actually formulate this committee to be able to give advice to the board as to how we're going to function in that capacity. Because if we look at what has happened in the turn of the century, the 19th century when it came to Ford, he had one car. And at that time, things were slow, and it, it didn't turn over exponentially. But here in the 21st century, IT, information technology, is turning over exponentially every year. And that's going to break down to every six months. So that means that the influx of what we're doing with the capacity of machinery that we need for everybody has to be inputted quickly. Okay. Did that uh, get your question, brother? Yeah, and where I'm going with this is, is that uh, uh, I, I've been in different meetings, and uh, you know we talk about the black male and those type of things, and, and black population in general. Yeah. And one of the main things is that we need employment, yeah. you know, to, to help out the community. And I've seen this as an opportunity to hire right. to train more minorities mm -hmm. uh, into this uh, this uh, fiber optic installing in the home and to maintain. It. And that's why I was kind of asking the question mm -hmm. about this benefit fund where we can get someone trained to, you know, I'm talking more or less more minorities for, for this area. Sure. Uh, trained to install in the home and to maintain it. Mm -hmm. 
Man, I, I'm curious, you know, just, I, you said you changed like 25 people, so it, was the majority of the minorities or was they just anybody at random? Right? Actually, and, the, the majority were minorities. And that's good. That's good. So that, that's kind of where I'm going with this. And I, I think that, that that's something that, that, that we need to that's potentially right. follow up on. That's right. Because it we is a need problem in relationship to UCDB. It is a general problem sure. in relation to everything. Sure. And that's why we have to think about our community first and then think about the community benefit fund. Because the community benefit fund it really is like an eyedropper of resources. It is not the resources we need to solve any of the big problems. The, the solution to our big problems is going to come from us. It's not going to come from that kind of fund. Okay, I've got Reverend Nash and then you. And, and you almost answered my question. But I want you to comment on what would have been the benefit of UC to be without Unfortunately, Can you repeat the question. Yeah, the question is if we did not have a community benefit fund, what would be the implication of that? One of the interesting aspects of uh, the VTOP program first, it was a top program, technology opportunity program. That was the first program. This one is called VTOP, the broadband technology opportunity program. All of the large institutions are absolutely clear. The hospitals pay a certain amount of money for their connectivity. They invested and will have their own strands of fiber so that they have privacy. But they needed to send uh, large files, x-rays, and so forth. So they knew exactly what they needed. And the school system, same way. The library, same way. They already had an IT bill, they already had it set up, and so they paying to help build this. In the long run, they're going to save money. The community, without the community benefit fund, will be left behind. There will be nothing. And therefore, our community will not be literate in the 21st century. Because literacy is not about do you read and write your own name. Literacy is about what software do you know? What kind of devices can you operate? And if you don't have that, you are illiterate. You know what it, you know, anybody with gray hair knows what illiteracy meant. That meant you couldn't read and write. You had to ask somebody else to, because you were making X. You were an X maker. And we have many X makers, 21st century X makers in our community. And people won't tell you. You know, somebody said, well, you mind, uh, I'm, can you do this uh, email for me? You know, I said, well, you know, come on, that's, we have to deal with this. Yes. Okay, I have a couple things. Um, in terms of the job, just piggybacking off of what he was talking about, I know some of those jobs were temporary, and so they have ended. Yes. So um, I don't know what um, things have been put in place to make those jobs be sustainable. Um, because, as he was saying, the joblessness is certainly an issue. Um, I was one of those temporary job persons, so I know firsthand. Um, and in terms of expansion of sign-ups, um, I know there was one particular anchor institution that did not jump on board, so part of it was their fault. And so they wanted to check to see if it was too late, and they were told that it was too late. So in terms of the extension of the grant, I know that that has is still up in the air. We've not received a response from that yet. Um, but in terms of sign-ups, is there any thought process into um, people that might want to come on later on? What's going to be done about that? Yeah, no, this is a very big policy question that we're dealing with, many angles. First point is that the grant is over as of the end of this month. Uh, and that's why things are relatively on hold now. But it is basically, given the way the election turned out and so on, basically we, we feel that the extension is going to be granted, which means September. But that September date is in the federal legislation. So there is no extension beyond September. That would require an act of Congress. 
So what NTIA had done, the federal agency, they had set up a deadline way before that, sort of giving themselves a cushion. So now uh, we should not look at uh, UCB or this money providing anything other than grant-specific jobs. We're now talking about how we're going to think and develop our community based on having access to this technology. So uh, just to complete, uh, uh, discuss what's going on, here's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Everybody knows that when you have a computer, you're going to have some problems. First of all, you're not going to know everything. And so you're going to need help. And secondly, you know, when your nephew comes over and does some things you don't want to talk about on the computer,